three-dimensional printing. Throughout my career, I've been involved with the digital world in the private sector, delivering digital content and services to customers, research and universities, and leading on behalf of governments a range of initiatives to stimulate the creative economy. Only in the past year or so, partly influenced by my daughter, have the scales dropped from my eyes. This is to see the links and the convergence between the digital and the physical worlds and the enormous opportunities that open up for individuals and organizations to innovate and manufacture in new ways. I'm talking here about 3D printing and the huge variety of applications that flow from this exciting technology. 3D printing unleashes design and creativity by enabling artifacts and objects to be printed using a wide variety of materials. My interest in sharing this idea with you today is twofold. My strong conviction that 3D printing is a manufacturing revolution in the making. It's probably where the internet was in 1995 or desktop publishing was in 1980. This comes from a horizon scanning of emerging technologies, which is one of the things that I do for a living. Secondly, my passion about the potential of 3D printing for creative cities, ranging from mature mega world cities to aspiring medium-sized cities, such as here in Chiang Mai, to remote towns and villages wherever in, in the world. So to share with you briefly how 3D printing works. You simply call up a design blueprint on your computer screen. You then tweak and tinker with the color or shape, and then you press print to execute the design. What happens next is that a 3D printer, which is located either nearby or thousands of miles away, whirs into life and gradually builds up the object, either by depositing material through a nozzle or by selectively solidifying layers of material, which could be metal, dust, resin, plastic, with tiny drops of glue or with infrared beams. The product thus fuses and takes shape by progressively adding material one layer at, at, at a time. Eventually, the product solidifies in three dimensions and out it pops from the, from the printer. The 3D printer can be the size of a desktop printer today located in a shop, in a home, or the corner of an office. Larger items require much larger printers, can be up to the size of a, of a small car. 3D printers are also known as additive manufacturing, personalized manufacturing, uh, or fabricators, or the short form is fabbers. For sure, 3D printing is a complex piece of gadgetry. But as with computing, the functionality is improving very rapidly and costs are falling, making it affordable to home users, uh, hobbyists, small businesses, and, and the like. The applications are increasingly diverse. Boeing, Airbus, uses 3D printing to print small parts of an airplane, the components in the wing, or for aircraft doors. The automotive industry is very active in this area, printing panels, prototypes, highly specialized parts for racing cars, Formula One. 3D printing is a very fertile area for biotech, the printing of body parts, human tissue, blood vessels, even human kidneys to solve the human donor problem, which was the subject of a previous uh, TED uh, talk. Implants such as hip replacements, all tailored to the individual's unique biological characteristics. A dental lab can print 450 dental crowns all in one day on one printer in one go. Again, tailored to the individual's biological characteristics. 
This is much less wasteful than conventional manufacturing. The ability to create shapes which are lightweight but sturdy and strong it could well be 3D printing's killer application. It's green technology. And it's not science fiction. We are seeing a combination of uh, research and development, prototyping, and real products being rolled out. And this is hugely significant for the creative industries because design and creativity are at the heart of this transformative technology. This is also very relevant to the competitiveness of the creative industries. The arts, architecture, crafts, jewelry, ceramics, lampshades, products such as mobile phone covers, uh, online games characters, clothes for models on catwalks, high heel shoes, specialized boots for football players, creative food manufacturing and preparation, and a variety of applications across manufacturing industry. Rapid prototyping with 3D printing is enabling designers to make their thinking 3D at the very earliest stages of, of, of development. And it is already having a major impact on the crafts uh, industry. Customers can experience the product made from, say, metals or wiring or paper or plastic long before it is made. To take a few examples that are of interest for me, one of my vices, chocolate. And perhaps a vice for some of you in the audience as, 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 as well. You, you can now personalize the design of your own chocolate. In 2011, University of Exeter unveiled the world's first 3D chocolate printer. It uses chocolate rather than ink. And they are now looking to combine chocolate with design ideas, digital manufacturing, and social network experiences. I'm almost salivating. <laughs> um, the Stradivarius violin illustrates the complexity and the potential of 3D printer printers. And no, it is not made of chocolate. And yes, it has been played by a concerto violinist. World of Warcraft is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. 11 million subscribers in a fantasy world. The printing of online games characters is a cash cow. To take one more example from a creative city, Remember those figurines we all used to get as kids uh, from a zoo, um, a street market, or an aquarium, and we'd lose them almost straight away? Well, now, if you walk down Barcelona's iconic pedestrian street called Las Ramblas, you can now get a souvenir of yourself instead of that of a whale or a lion. It works like this. There are three Microsoft Kinect games controllers in a booth with in-depth sensors combined with a low-cost 3D printer using open-source software called RepRap, Rapid Replicator. The great thing about this is that the figurine is modeled exactly after you. Why let all those dumb animals get all the glory? And a tip, why not get a model done of your um, partner or your boss and when you get mad at them, you can simply bash them over the head. So just let your imagination run wild with the endless possibilities for creating shapes using an endless variety of different materials. In economic terms, we are now seeing the beginnings of a powerful maker innovation ecosystem. You can not only design it yourself, you can make it yourself and sell it yourself. You can be your own Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. You can move from imagination to held in your hand reality in one step. And you cut out the middle man. So what we are seeing now are the descendants of mass-scale manufacturing 
of production lines of sameness. What 3D printing offers is infinitely personalized world of customized, tailored, bespoke products, mass customization. A compelling aspect of 3D printing is that it lowers the cost of entry into the business of making things. It lowers risk. You don't need the capital and heavy in infrastructure associated with manufacturing with conventional uh, means. But perhaps one of the most exciting aspects of 3D printing is that it stimulates innovation to create shapes that conventional manufacturing cannot achieve, resulting in more efficient, but also more beautiful designs, more free-flowing, more natural, more organic, more aesthetic, more artistic, in short, more, more flexible. The partnership between 3D printing and the creative industries is a marriage made in heaven because it enables you to rapidly turn an idea into manufacturing. It shrinks the distance between culture, creativity, and manufacturing. It's empowering. It democratizes design. For those of you who are social scientists, now I'm not going to talk about Karl Marx and the means of production and all that. 3D printing also enables uh, any community, however remote and small, to get into the business of creating and manufacturing things. This ability to satisfy customer demands instantly and immediately will stimulate new approaches to design, to digital marketing and retailing. The technology is at the heart of it, for, to be sure, but it is not nearly enough. So major changes in supply, cha in ch supply chains on the way, the kinds of jobs people do and wear, all on the horizon. 3D printing is starting to gather momentum very fast. Governments are commissioning policy reports. Universities are building centers of excellence. Products are being developed. Investment is being attracted. And yes, profits are being generated. I visited Ravensbourne College in the UK a few months ago, and I was blown away by what I saw. The iPhone meets 3D um, printing. Already in 2012, an app has been launched last week, in fact, uh, for uh, design. Uh, on the iPhone of uh, 3D printing applications. So what needs to happen next? 3D printing is highly challenging, is that it requires new ways of working that link commodities, rare earths, precious metals, abundant commodities with nano, design, hardware, software, electronics, life sciences, materials engineering, and storytelling. 3D printing is truly bridging digital and physical worlds and spawning new visual vocabularies. The silos between sectors and disciplines are breaking down at an accelerating pace. What's exciting is that engineers and scientists working with artists and craftspeople. So, a lot of business model disruption on the way and huge intellectual property ch battles lie, lie ahead. It is therefore in, in, imperative that policymakers, research community, and businesses partner to spark the intensive knowledge exchange required across this new, new ecosystem. Put a 3D print in every school and university to nurture skills and creativity. This is a prudent investment in, uh, in, in economic prosperity. It's a positive innovation shock to catalyze new economic paradigms that many of us wish to, 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 to see. So in summary, start building now, start, get ready now before this becomes a mature technology. Strive for your 
cities, towns, and villages to be in the Premier League in exploiting this technology. The prizes are worth it. It opens the door to creativity. It stimulates more collaboration. And it enables production of more customizable uh, products and parts. This all has the potential to lead to more sustainable, fairer, more equitable societies. I'd like to leave you with a challenge of three questions. Where will all this uh, co-creative imagination take the creative industries? Secondly, how can the creative industries position themselves as leaders in these value chains to create new markets. What are you waiting for? <laughs>